one with uh, Kid Ref, Chris Levin. Um, Levin. Levin Levin. He, uh, he was the old referee. Oh, not the old referee. He was the baby referee for Impact Wrestling for uh, about two or three years. He left at the end of 2019, started 2020. Uh, and when asked on Twitter about 11 days ago, like this story got fucking no play. And I don't know why. Uh, but asked 11 days ago, why, you know, would he go back to re- uh, Impact Wrestling? You know, did you leave because of education? Yada, yada. Chris Levin said, nope, I'm not ready to discuss it publicly yet, but they committed grievously unethical conduct, and I refuse to continue to be associated with it any further. Start the debates on what that is. So there are two that leap to mind immediately. Either Levin's talking about the Killer Cross, Scarlett Bordeaux contract situations, which we've already documented it was completely and solely on Chris, uh, Killer Cross. I was about to call him Chris Cross. Hey, ho, hey. Sorry. <laughs> um, either uh, that, that was all on Killer Cross for not reading his contract. Uh, or there, or he's talking more about, I, 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 I can't even say the COVID stuff because he was gone from the company by then. So I don't know what the hell he's talking about. Um, I've heard nothing about this. Um, he has zero love for it, saying that if I had loved Impact that much, I wouldn't have left. Um, the, the fan he's talking to says, but I thought you left to finish college or education or something. Levin replies with not sure where you heard that, but it's 100% false. So he's very much a social justice kind of guy. You know, a lot of the things he advocates for are the things that would fall into the social justice realm. So this could mean any anything, really. Maybe he was upset about Scott Steiner slapping Jordan Grace's ass for all we know. I don't know. Um, but to say that they committed grievously unethical conduct, you know, that that that's a pretty big fucking thing to accuse somebody of. But I'm also worried about him making this accusation because in a follow-up tweet, not a follow-up tweet, I should say, but in a later tweet to, uh, uh, posted today, he said that he worked for CZW from 2011 to 2013, and he's grateful for the opportunities and lessons learned. He then goes on to say, I also uh, dreaded ever going there every month because of its toxic atmosphere, rampant bullying, misogyny, and outright dangerous business practices. Glad things are finally coming to light. So, Levin essentially worked for two years for a company that has been doing all this deplorable shit without really saying anything about it. So I really don't know how much of what Levin says can be taken with some sincerity because for someone who advocates so strongly for so many people, um, he doesn't really seem to have much of a backbone. I know I'm not someone who's going to fucking take being slighted uh, uh, silently. <laughs> I, I'm not going to go and, and go full on like crazy about something, but I'm also not going to sit here and be like, listen, you know, someone did me wrong and I'm not going to say anything about it. No, I'm, I'm going to speak up and be like, Hey, don't do dealings with so-and-so they're kind of shady. So I don't know if Chris Levin's perspective on what is grievously unethical conduct is going to be in line with what I think it is. Did Impact ask Homicide to take a bump that he was a little unsure of, but then eventually agreed to? Is that what he would consider grievously unethical conduct? Are they making, is the whole Joey Ryan gimmick change grievously unethical? Was bringing in Katie Forbes grievously unethical? Like, I don't know what his standard is. So I don't know what this is in terms of a, a, a potential issue. Because he's a pretty, like, if you, if you go through his timeline, like, he's very much super sensitivity. Not that that's a bad thing, but, you know, I'm the kind of guy where if, you know, I break a, a knuckle in my hand, I'm going to just wear a fucking, uh, some gauze on it and, and be fine in a few weeks. I, you know, I'm not going to the hospital to have them tell me, yep, you broke your knuckle. I know that already, chief. Well, it's just, just you know, we're going to wrap it so I can do that at home. Yeah, but we're going to charge you $2,000. No, we're fine. Let's go. But we can give you painkillers. I don't need painkillers. So, I do, you know, it's like pain tolerance. I don't know what his grievously unethical conduct tolerance is. It could be calling someone a cunt. You know what I mean? Like, that could be the big thing. You called her a cunt. Oh, oh, oh. Well, like, well, he saw, he saw uh, like, uh, female uh, butt cleavage. Right? Or, or maybe uh, Don Cows, like Katie Forbes, you, you, you know, we want to put you in this other hot chicken in a hot tub nude. And Chris Levin's like, well, you shouldn't be doing that. That's grievously unethical. 
maybe he saw someone with impact wrestling beating down a black person while wearing a white hood. I don't know. <laughs> like, where's the line for him? For yeah, me, if you, we, what's like, that? Like, what's that? You don't get specific. Even we don't get specific, and you leave it vague like that. Mm-hmm. It's it's just not enough. Exactly. You, you let everyone kind of wonder. Like for me, if I say that WWE has done something grievously unethical, you know that someone's either been forced to do something, some racist bullshit's happened, they, they, they somehow threatened someone, or there was a white dude beating on a black dude while wearing a white hood. Like, you know where that line is. It's not going to be, well, Daniel Brooke called Sasha Banks a, a, a duty hat. Like, I, I, I don't give a fuck. Did Dana Brooke call someone a cunt? I don't care. <laughs> right? Like... Did someone smack the other person in the face because someone got called a cunt? I don't care. Like, that, I don't fucking care. <laughs> you do. No, Chad. The word cunt triggers my traumas. <laughs> Why? Because you're such a cunt? <laughs> ah, trigger! <laughs> the word trigger should always be followed by that gif of that angry lefty uh, shortcut pixie chick with the screaming face where she's like clenching her teeth and like you can tell she's going yeah. but like yeah. shaking on the screen like that's what that gif is like just sh- her shaking every time you say triggered <laughs> and listen I know I just made a joke about that and I know that's uh, but I, I fully know that that's a real thing with mm-hmm. people you know and, and it happens all the time but because there's never been since this whole um this wave has been going on, like you said, it's it, it's a wheel, and it, it's gonna turn, and we're gonna go. You know, the, the pendulum swing is just swinging real hard right now in a certain direction. But you know, because there's never been a universal line in terms of what you know, where people's outrage is when it comes to this stuff, and people, you know, just dictated on whatever subjective manner they have, you know, be in their feelings about it at the time. A lot of this stuff gets overblown, and again, because you know the whole unethical thing. That's a big ass blanket on on covering a lot of potential st- stuff. And if he doesn't want to ever be specific about it, then it kind of just comes off as, you know, you kind of just in your feelings, mm-hmm. right? So because like you said, this this is a beautiful time as an Impact fan because we're not besides them <laughs> employing Joey Ryan. There's not really you know too many stains on the record right now. And to be fair. I don't like the Joey Ryan character, and him as a person, I have a lot of moral ethical issues with, like the whole sticking uh, an Easter basket in your pants, and then you know saying that it's an Easter basket for kids, like that's fucked up. But also, his new gimmick is amazing and hilarious, and I need more of it. <laughs> so like, I'm confused. I'm like that anti-drug dude who's just been introduced to caffeine. Like this is technically a drug, and it affects the way I think. I'm totally Mormon in this scenario. I need more coffee. <laughs> Like, I don't know. Like, you know, the, the, the whole thing, when was it um, last week with um, uh, Crazy Steve and OVE? Your OVE are over. And then he's like, you know, uh, you know, you better watch out. I'm going to get you. And he's like, well, I'm not scared of that. I'm crazy. And then Joey Ryan's like, you shouldn't say that word. You shouldn't say the C word. It's offensive to people who are nuts. <laughs> and then he leaves. I'm like, that's fucking gold. Oh, uh, I got to watch it. Uh, it was, I got to watch it. It, it was it was cool. solid. I, I I missed last week's, although I I'm pissed at myself because um, Kimberly and Tasha Steele. Is that her name? Dasha. Oh, uh, uh, from um, Tasha Steele's from N- N- uh, NWA. Yeah, I think she debuted in Impact last week. Nice, nice. I, I think... know. I know. Uh, Havoc has a new friend that Madison Rain brought on that show. Yeah, that's Kimberly. She used to be in NXT and was the first female Shikara Grand Champion. 